If you like Mazda Speed 3s or you like free cars, we're giving this one away. If you didn't know, commerspeed.com. Check out the link in the description. Go get entered and check out this series and watch us modify it and then call one of you the first week of April to let you know that you won this car. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be installing the ACT clutch on our giveaway. Mazda Speed 3, I'm not sure if it's going to fit right here. And it's crazy windy. There's our favorite tree with leaves everywhere. So the wrap isn't technically done yet. Ran to learn how to wrap. I didn't cut things right. A combination, we wasted a bunch of film, so we had to order some more. So we're like, hey, let's use the time and install this clutch because the stock clutch is falling apart. Straight. This color looks awesome in the sun. After studying up, what are you thinking? Expert, intermediate, above expert? Always above expert. This is above expert? No, no. They're talking about me. Talking oh, you're always above expert. Whoa. Uh, What's this install? I would say intermediate. It's not necessarily the easiest thing. There's just a few things you gotta take off, but it's nothing too crazy really. So we'll get after it and get all these clutch noises to go away. Show us what we're looking at. We got a smoked out tranny mount right up here. It's just completely broken through. I kind of figured that thing wasn't doing very well. Yeah, that's, that's why all these noises are happening. Everything's toast. What in the contraption is this? That is an engine support bar. Keeps your engine from falling down. As you remove this mount that holds the tranny on, this kind of holds, reinforces the whole this side of the motor. As you can see, it's kind of drooping a little bit. The mount right here, which is actually blown out, does take quite a bit of weight and wear. So that's what this bar right here does, is keeps the motor up in place. So the pieces that you gotta remove on the drive line, you gotta remove both axles. Driver's side is just a simple axle. On the passenger side on these Mazdas, you have this, I don't know what this exact part is called, but technically it's a crossover piece that extends. So instead of having one long axle, you have this piece right here, which is a little more heavy duty than what I'm assuming. That goes in here, and then you can remove the axle from there, and then you unbolt this from the side of the motor, and then this slides out. And now we have both sides free. Now we just gotta remove this mount down here and finish taking out the last couple bell housing bolts and then we'll be ready to pull it out. She has seen better days. Mm. What clutch? She is smoked. So our clutch was still working, but it was very, very noisy and not very strong. And like Randall showed you earlier, this is your throw out bearing right here, and this thing should be crispy and silent. And uh, sounds like it's beyond gone. So when we're driving the car, you hear all this noise. It's just this constantly spinning whenever you engage the clutch. It's gross. As far as the life of this thing it had some left in it for sure it's definitely seen better days when we throw some more power at it there's definitely a chance that it will start slipping get even worse we don't want it to break down on you guys so we're gonna have to install the new one of course that'll make it stronger it'll grip hard you can launch it a little bit off lights more and it will run like a new car so you're slipping fourth gear yeah. on the way to the pdr place mm -hmm. wasn't even doing pulls either it was just like just slightly getting on the gas so it's dark. Get that pilot bearing out of there. Rear main still looks good. What do we got there? A little slide hammer. Yeah, pop this Johnny out. What do you call that thing? A little cheek spreader. There we go. There we go. You gotta make those noises too.
Okay, those little C8 action. Attachment number three. Does the new one come with that? Yeah, I would hope so. I was assuming you, th you knew it did. No, I just know this is a wearable item. We're definitely gonna so, get a new one. Does it here right now? I don't know. I'm assuming if it's a clutch kit, they should have it in a clutch kit. Here in our kit, we have our new pilot bearing. ACT's got us dialed. And then we have fresh release bearing. This is also a, uh, what do we call it? Throw out bearing. Technically, release bearing. You need to freeze it or something? No, just whack her in. Oh, I have a thing set for that too. You have the exact deal for it? No, but one that'll probably work. Okay, so if you don't know, it's gonna need sockets. Maybe a little too big, or too small, a little too big, so probably a 14. You can use sockets. It's not technically the right way to do it. They have actual press bearing cup deals that you use to pound these in. Essentially, what we need, what we want, is something that'll fit in here, but not bigger than the, the diameter of this pilot bearing here. So we're gonna clean this hole out first. Some brake cleaner. Sure that's centered. Give it a couple light taps. Take our socket. Just like that. She's installed. Randall cleaned off the bolts for the flywheel, put some thread locker on it. Feet pounds. Feet pounds. They use this thing in NASA because it does feet pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Got it. Included in the package from ACT is a little pouch of grease. When you install the release bearing or throwout bearing, you do need to hook. It's got a little hook on it like that on the back side of the bearing. Make sure that goes on the clutch fork. And then your movement, your fork moves with your bearing. You want to make sure that's what you have there. Now we're going to take a little bit of this ceram lube, ceramic lube, I guess. Some on the splines. Just going to go ahead and work that around on the bottom this isn't installing it randall's just getting lube on the splines yeah, you don't want to put this on here you won't make it far <laughs> <laughs> you will not make it far and you'll just wipe off the excess you don't want this stuff getting flung on your surface here We'll show them how you kind of got those two together really quick. Right here, you want to make sure right on top here, it says flywheel side. So this mates up to the flywheel. And we'll just kind of set this in here. We'll get our alignment tool in there and then we'll kind of put it all in as one. And we'll line up our pins. We got two, now we have three. So it's like one. The big yellow piece is the pressure plate, and that is held on by the hardware included. What size is that, that bolt? Uh, 10 millimeter. It's also important when you tighten down the pressure plate that you do these bolts evenly until they're snug, and then a cross pattern until they're snug. These bolts torque to 25 foot pounds.
to make it easier, we are lowering the engine for a better angle for the clutch. The transmission is now in. When you go ahead and put this up, you're gonna get it about in place and then you can start doing the bell housing bolts and start lightly tightening them all the way around and it will help you kind of suck it up into place. There's three on the top that Randall's gonna put in when he lowers the car and puts everything back on top of the engine. He'll do those bell housing bolts from there. The hardest part is kind of over. We do need to replace our clutch slave cylinder and that has a line that attaches to the fork, right? It's just a piece that sits in here. Yeah, so it sits in, in here. So you see up in there where the fork is, or the solenoid is? Uh huh. Or the slave? Uh huh. There's just the end. The end of that is, sits in here, and that's what applies the pressure when you put the clutch in. And if you didn't know, when you press your foot down on the clutch pedal, you're moving this fork is all you're doing. That's the only thing physical. From here, let's just put it back together. We'll get a new clutch slave cylinder and then we can see if the clutch works. If you guys want a step-by-step -step install, we wanted to walk you through the overview and kind of what you're getting into. So if you have somewhat of an experience, you'll probably just run and gun, but I highly recommend checking out ACT's video in the description. Since we are on a time frame with this Mazda, it has created a new problem for me from a creative standpoint of we don't have time to go step-by-step -step through some of these larger processes. So we have a link in the description to check out that step-by-step -step video. Video. Once this video is over, you can go check it out or you can wait until you go do this yourself, then pull that up ahead of time and prep yourself mentally. One of the last parts to get the clutch to work, we needed a new clutch slave cylinder. We got this from carparts.com. This is a Dorman product. You actually can't get these locally, or at least we couldn't in Phoenix. So good thing carparts.com was literally the only one I could find that had it. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and toss some brake fluid in here, prime the system a little bit, then we'll hook it up and see if it'll bleed and our clutch will work. In a normal situation, you could press the clutch, open the bleeder valve, and close it, do it again to get the air out of the line to pull fluid into the clutch slave cylinder. But Randall's got a fancy tool. What is this fancy contraption? So it's essentially just a vacuum pump. It hooks up to the air compressor and it draws a vacuum. This seals around the bleeder nipple and it allows you to be able to do this as a one man thing instead of having somebody in the car pumping the pedal. This eliminates all that and it sucks all the air out and you can see it in the hose. It makes it a lot easier. You wait till you see a solid stream or what? Yeah. So you see all this, like it looks like fizzy. Yeah. That's air essentially inside of the brake fluid. So you want it to look kind of like that. Do I need right to there. be? Do I need to be double checking that it's full up there? Yeah. So we'll check here in a little bit. We barely have any out, so it's still full. But once this starts to start flowing, then we'll make sure we top it off because we don't want to empty out the reservoir because then essentially you're just gonna have to start over again. And you can damage the seals if you do Run drain. It completely yes so mm -hmm. we'll just get this going a little bit and then make sure to fill it back up here in a second So this car has two baffles, one that goes to the clutch slave cylinder and one that goes to the brake system. You have to keep this thing absolutely full. That's why we have big old 32 ounce of brake fluid. Keep it topped off as your buddy pumps the clutch pedal or Randall down there is pulling the air out with his tool. So I'm gonna sit here and pour it in and keep it extremely topped off and I'll see it just suck all the fluid in. But if you let it get very low at all, it won't work. stuck to the floor now let me pull it up okay i'm gonna do it again ready oh she's feeling nice feels solid Is it clo oh yeah she feels nice clutch job done yep. let's drive this thing i know finally Hey, this thing feels nice. Feeling nice? Oh, yeah. yeah this feels pretty good. 
Feels nice and smooth. Oh, yeah. Cushy feeling. No weird noises. Yeah, no weird noises yet. Put windows up to get see if we can hear anything. Where are they see now? Yeah. How's it feeling through the gears? Feels good. I got that. Draw bearing was cooked. This one don't make any noise anymore. If you buy one of these Mazda Speed 3s, the ACT clutch is a great option. Pedal feel is just firm enough in my opinion, and I've driven quite a few manual cars, owned quite a few, and this is exactly how I'd prefer most of my cars. It's just enough bite where it feels like you can have fun with the car and not feel guilty, and it will stand up to what you, the abuse you put it through, but it's also light enough to where it doesn't really stress me out in the thought of daily driving or anything like that. So if you want to check out an ACT clutch, maybe get one for yourself. I have a link in the description. Don't forget you can win this car. Commerspeed.com. Get entered to win this giveaway. It supports the channel. And then one of you guys need to get a call from me the first week of April to let you know you won this car. Come out to Arizona. Come check it out, and then we'll make sure we get it back to your house. It's going to be awesome. In this video right here, we install a new exhaust for this car. We make the tone sound nice so that when we add a downpipe, it's going to sound absolutely perfect. Really nice cop piece. Go check it out. This is a fun part of the process. I always enjoy the new exhaust systems.